Hollywood Center City Church. You already know. Yes, in the summer studios. Yep, here I we like are. that name. We're just going to keep using it. Yeah, even if we do this in the winter. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here with Pastor Ashley, who um, did a phenomenal job communicating this week. Thanks, I had fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was obvious that you had fun. And uh, we're still in James. Surprise! We've only got a couple more weeks to go. I'm going to miss it. I mean, we've only got a few more verses to go, so there's only so much longer we can drag it out. Yeah, absolutely. But I will too. I feel like I know James now. Yeah, I feel like I know me a little better too. Mm -hmm. um, that hashtag that we've just kind of put on this series we think is kind of silly, blame James. Um, I kind of felt a little unfair for James because I think we uh, want to blame James for as harsh as he is, but then when he's encouraging... We don't want to give him credit. So I think blame James in this reference is, is actually a little bit of a correction. He has a little bit of a correction mm -hmm. to the way that we're thinking, but that's super encouraging. Yeah. And he starts with this idea that you and I talked about, I think is missing in today's current culture of churchdom mm -hmm. and uh, really on this idea of the blessed hope that when the writer <laughs> penned this... I'm laughing because I thought you were talking about Star Wars when you referred to it that way because I've never heard that before today. Blessed Hope? Yeah. No, that was like um, all the old hymns, like Blessed Assurance. I know, Blessed and, Assurance, yeah, no, Jesus is mine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the early church really had a, a pretty uh, important cultural conversation and it became a part of who they were that they mm -hmm. were constantly kind of looking up. Right, yeah, yeah. waiting for Jesus to kind of break the sky and return, mm -hmm. and then we kind of move to 2022, where we're not really looking up anymore. And what I mean by that is the average believer probably doesn't live with the hopeful expectation of Jesus' second yeah. coming. Not that they ignore it, but they don't necessarily frame it the same way. It doesn't mm -hmm. hold the same weight. Why do you think that is? I think some of it is natural. Because if you're looking at that first generation of Christians, they watched Jesus, the disciples did. They watched him ascend into heaven in the sky. They knew he said he would be back. And so it made sense to just keep an eye out for him. Whereas for us, we're 2,000 years later, we didn't ever see Jesus. And so it's a, it's a little bit easier to kind of get into this rhythm of, well, it's been generations and he hasn't come back. So it's more likely that he won't come back in my lifetime than he will. So I'm not going to think about it. And I didn't get into this Sunday, but it actually reminds me a lot of what the culture was like when Jesus came the first time that God had promised the Messiah for so long, but then had gone silent basically for several gener a lot of generations. And, um, and so when Jesus came, no one was really expecting him because it had been so long, which is such a good reminder to us that we have no idea when God's going to choose to act. He could do it today. Um, so we need to have that same expectation, but also give yourself a little grace if you haven't been looking up to the sky all the time waiting for him. So James says that our response to our waiting should be faithful endurance. Mm -hmm. Faithful endurance. She did a phenomenal job communicating a little bit about your brother and how now as a Ironman athlete, he's mm -hmm. had to learn how, what it means to actually endure physically yeah. and the preparation that went into it, which I thought was phenomenal. Was there any nuggets that you didn't include in the message that you learned from your brother? Yeah, actually one of the things that, it even kind of ties into part of what James said in this passage that we didn't get into. So when we were doing sermon prep, as you remember, there's this one verse at the end where James is basically quoting Jesus and saying, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And I remember at the time we all just kind of scratched our heads and we're like, what does this have to do with what he's been talking about with endurance? But then when I was talking to my brother, he said one of the things he learned was that in order to say yes to doing the race, he had to say no to a lot of other things. Yeah. That if he knew he was saying yes to the training that it was going to take to be able to endure and do this race, there was at least going to be a season that he couldn't do other things, even if they were good things that he enjoyed, because he had to kind of stick to what he was doing. And that, to me, to be completely honest, I didn't even fully work out exactly the way it's connected but I feel like there's something in there too James talking about how we need to endure and then telling us to let our yes be yes and our no be no to really take some time and think through if this is the thing if yeah. my endurance is waiting for Jesus to come back waiting for his kingdom to be established on earth as it is in heaven 
how do I say yes to that and what might be the things that I really need to say no to in order to prioritize the best thing? Yeah, I think what James kind of lines up is this importance of commitment and that what we say, and we should be people of our word that commit in a way that reflects our hope in the coming of, of Jesus. So right. in 2022, what would you say to the person who's like, I want to make sure that I'm lined up, that I'm living in a way that I'm being fruitful in my endurance, um, what are some of the things they have to try to maybe avoid? I think for us today, distraction is the biggest thing. It's not, it's not anything except there are all these little things that can just pop up and we can busy ourselves with playing computer games and getting to next levels and watching different things that come out on Netflix and none of this stuff is necessarily bad. But I think we just need to live with a little bit more intention. So some of that is as simple as waking up in the morning and just giving that day to God. And if you spend the first few minutes of your day in prayer and you kind of think through your day and you make yourself available to what God would have for you, yeah. then you'll recognize those opportunities to say yes to the right thing. You might run into a neighbor and before you would have just kind of waved hello, gotten in your car and not realized that was an opportunity to be intentional, to show them that you care about them. Um, so really just starting simply, just asking God to help you be available, being available in your everyday and then saying no to some of those distractions that are so easy to get caught up in. Yeah, I think if last week um, the thought was, if you show me your checkbook, I'll show you your heart. I think if you show me your schedule, I'll show you what you consider important. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a phenomenal, your, your challenge to consider our yeses, to wake up in the morning and be faithful, to create the type of boundaries that allow us to say yes to the things that honor God versus filling our time with things that are just flippant and mm -hmm. not considered. I think that, that that's absolutely huge. And you did a phenomenal job. Was there something else about Sunday that really kind of stood out? Like that idea of faithfulness and endurance seems to be one that a lot of people resonated with. Yeah, I, I think we just, we live in the present and we do it really well, which can be a good thing, but we need that reminder that we're part of an eternal story yeah. and our stories aren't our own. Like we kind of live in this place where it's great to figure out what's your story and how do you tell your story? And we all have stories, but the reality is they're all part of God's story. And so when we can situate ourselves in that reality to still be thankful for the story that he's telling in our lives and with our lives, but also how we point to what he's been doing for generations that ultimately all points to Jesus it just helps us to endure because we recognize we're part of something bigger, that it's not just about the here and now. I think that that's, it's critical to mm -hmm. be able to think um, uh, with eternity in mind, yeah. to think with his return in mind. And I think that that's where James kind of started and you kind of ended the message Sunday and it was super powerful. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for letting me, let me oh, speak. Absolutely. And next week. Yeah. You, do, you do not want to miss next week. <laughs> James... I'm excited about it. That's why I giggle. It's going to be a little different. So. Yeah, yeah. James speaks about prayer and praise and puts it in this place of um, almost like tools. Like this is how you can use these things in seasons of waiting and endurance in order to be encouraged and encourage mm -hmm. other, one another. So I can't wait to kind of get my teeth into it. We're going to have a great uh, uh, a time in the Word and in worship, and we can't wait to see you. Um, anything exciting happening that I've, I've got to tell people about? Yeah, we got baptism coming up right around the corner. We cannot wait for that. So if you're interested in baptism, maybe you're new in the faith, or maybe it's something that you just put out for a long time. Again, James would say that your yeses be yes and your noes be yeah. noes. And if your yes was yes to Jesus, then your yes is yes to baptism according to what we read in scripture. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is go to centercity.church slash baptism and all the information's there. You can actually fill out a form and it'll give us the opportunity to just kind of touch base with you and yeah. kind of fill you in on the details. It's going to be great and then right around the corner we have our family dinners that's yeah. going to be here before you know it wednesday night it's going to be great wednesday august 31st 31st so we have we have a few weeks yeah we got a few weeks but we can't wait for that it's going to be a lot of fun and look look to the email boxes on mm -hmm. wednesday if all this information's there so yeah. i guess we'll okay. see you sunday see you sunday